Hello everyone, Maximus W01 here, and today I got a reaction for you guys. This was actually requested by someone, and this is the creator of this video. I'll be reacting to Thomas Comic Dub Detective James. And, uh, but this is by Mr. Mindblock slash Daylight Twinkle. Yeah, I've never seen this. Um, yeah, I'm just reacting for this person. Uh, I hope it's good. Be sure to uh, subscribe to Mr. Mindblock or Daylight Twinkle when this video is up. I'm going to put the link to the video in the description. Let's get this show on the road in 3, 2, 1. Detective James by Jasper Pie. I'm in a bit Babscon this year. Okay, this is some um, Thomas stuff. I think that's James. James's driver has a daughter named Gwendolyn. Every weekend, her father takes her to visit the big red engine before work. James loved it when Gwendolyn came to see him. She was as sweet as can be, and she always said the nicest things about his paintwork. Aww. Today, Gwendolyn was especially excited. Daddy's taking me to the movies to see Hemlock Loans tonight. He's a detective. He's really clever, handsome, and can solve any mystery. Wow, he sounds amazing. He is. He almost reminds me of you, James. Is that so? Hmm. I wonder. This made James think. He thought of himself as a detective. Being clever, sneaking around, solving mysteries, keeping Sodor safe. I haven't seen Thomas in a while, very so... Handsome doing it. This is good so far. Yeah, I could be a great detective. The other engines couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Funny, James. First you'd have to find a clue. James wasn't impressed. Ha! <laughs> Shows what you know, Emily. That afternoon, he was still upset. Have to have a clue. Ha! <laughs> I'll show them. I'll show them all. I'll be the best detective this island's ever seen. And even better than that. Paxton was shunting when he overheard James. He became excited. Ooh, James! Are you going to solve a mystery? I love mysteries. Ooh, can I come with you? Ooh, please! Why not? Every detective needs their dim but lovable sidekick. <laughs> then I'm your diesel! You and me, Paxton. Together, we're gonna crack the biggest case this island's ever seen. Oh, yes, brilliant! Ooh, maybe we can get Sydney to help. He and I once solved the case. The of words the were a little long, cards. but the voice is good. Tell you that story. Brilliant it was. See? Oh, dear. here he oh, comes. Dear. Oh, dear. I'll ask him. Hey, Sydney, want to help me and James <laughs> with? Can't stop trying to remember what I forgot, but I can't remember why. <laughs> Sydney? Huh. That was weird. I wonder what's bothering him. We can't worry about him now. Besides, he'll probably just forget about it within five minutes. Let's go, Detective Paxton. We're on a case. And so, Detectives James and Paxton set off down the line to look for a mystery to solve. All righty, Paxton. We need a case to solve. What have we got? Uh, ooh, what about the mystery of the disappearing, hey? Uh, I told you, he went back to America. Hmm. Uh, the mystery of who bumped Charlie yesterday. Oh, come on, that was obviously Diesel. Again. What about, uh, what's Thomas still doing in the yard? Seriously, that's not much of a mystery, Pack. But sure enough, there was Thomas, sitting all alone in the sheds at mm -hmm. Tidmouth Station. James was surprised to see him still there. Hey, that is weird. He should be on his branch line by now. Guess is he, one mystery is, is good he dead another. or at least Let's broken? Investigate. But as they moved closer okay, to Thomas, just that. they saw that the little blue tank engine was looking miserable. What are you doing in the sheds, Thomas? I thought you were out on your branch line. <sighs> I'm in big trouble for something I didn't even do. Really? What happened? Spencer's special coaches are missing, and he accused me of stealing them. I tried to tell Sir Topham Hatt that I didn't steal anything, but he wouldn't listen. I'm sorry, Thomas. But until this matter is dissolved, you'll have to stay in the yard for the day. 
Wow. It's an outrage, a scandal. I say, our Thomas may be cheeky. But he is not a thief. We in the very idea is preposterous. I'm glad someone thinks so. It's just not fair. James and Paxton could see how upset Thomas was and felt sorry for him. Well, we believe you, Thomas. You do? We do. In fact, we are going to help you. We'll find those coaches and clear your name. So says Detective James. Hmm. You will? Oh, detectives. How debonair. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Our first real case. So... Can you tell us anything about... Ahem. I'll ask the questions, Paxton. So, Mr... The Tank Engine, <laughs> what can you tell us about the night of the stealing? Mr. The Tank Engine? Okay. Uh, it all started last night. It was the end of a busy day, and I was getting ready to go back to my shed when Spencer snuck in, flaunting his special coaches again. Ah, oh, Thomas. Be a good lad and shove my coaches away, please. I told him that I didn't have time. I was needed back in Tidmouth Yard now, but... My splendid carriages take top priority. Certainly more than those old beach huts you drag about. Jerk. Beach huts, indeed. Such a rude engine. Indeed. I must wish we had stolen his coaches. <laughs> I mean, it'd be wrong, of course, but still... I was angry and just wanted to scream at Spencer, but we were already making a scene. So I just shunted his stupid coaches into the siding next to the station. Why does he need two coaches? I don't know. I don't care, Sydney. Let someone else take them. And then I went back to my shed. I was too tired to do anything anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Was there anyone else in the yard? Hmm. There was Gordon, Donald, Rebecca, Diesel, and Sydney. Aha! Witnesses and possible Sydney. suspects. Were they? Diesel, maybe, but I don't think the others would want to steal coaches, especially not Rebecca or Sydney. Now that I think about it, what was Sydney doing there? He doesn't want a napper. Mm. First rule of Detective, uh, Ing, Paxton, suspect anyone. But you've got a point about Sydney. He's just not the criminal type. Even if he was, like his face he'd forget there. about it just like that. His brain's more slippery than a grease stain on an ice rink. What does that even mean? It's an analogy. Lots of great detectives use them. Anyway, leave it to us, Thomas. We'll clear your name and find those coaches, too. Well, at least he's confident. Good luck, boys. And so, detectives James and Paxton were on the case, looking for suspects to interrogate. James led Paxton along the Little Western until they found the very engine they were looking for, Donald, collecting ballast from the miniature railway. While Donald wasn't a very devious engine, James knew he and Douglas didn't take kindly to bullies, like Spencer. And everyone knows that it's not too long before standing up for the little guy turns into thievery. All right, Paxton, it's time for the next important step in being a master detective, interrogating a suspect. So, are we just going to go up to Donald and ask him about the coaches? No, of course not. You can't just go up to a suspect and say they're a suspect. You've got to play it casual. Be cool and confident and subtle. And I am a master at being subtle. So just watch and learn, buddy. Really? I thought you could be subtle. Afternoon, Donald. Hello, James. How are things? Not too bad, actually. Anything new happening? Nothing unusual. Yeah, nothing unusual. <clears throat> so, nice weather, eh? Hey, it's supposed to rain this weekend, but I think we need it. Yeah, good for the plants. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so... Come on. Do you know what up? happened to Spencer's coaches? Wait, what? Called it. Uh, sorry, Donald. See, we're looking for Spencer's coaches. We want to prove that Thomas didn't steal them. Oh, hey, I heard about that. I don't have rubbish if you ask me. I don't think the wee engine stole the big silver baby's coaches, but I wouldn't blame them if he did. 
I got the ground submarine thinks he can pull far over us just because he's a private agent. I'm like a nuisance more like. And I don't blame you for asking around, but I promise you, I did not take the cultures either, though I'd be tempted to. I had to do another ballast run for the Pierre Gaudry branch. I didn't have time for anything else. I can vouch for him. We did have to load a lot of ballast into his trucks. By the way, James, I wouldn't stay there too long if I were you. Wouldn't stay there too long? What's that supposed to... Oh! Oh! Sorry, James. I didn't see you there. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Rick did try to warn you, James. With Donald off the hook, detectives James and Paxton made their way to Ellsbridge, where they found their next suspect shunting in the yard, Evius Diesel himself. Of course, we all know how troublesome Diesel can be. It's gotta be Diesel. We should have gone straight to him first. So, why didn't we? All right, Paxton, this time we've got to play tough with Diesel. Follow my lead. Diesel was shunting one last line of trucks eager to go back to the shunting yards when he was rudely interrupted by two certain detectives. Hello, Diesel. Having a good day, are you? What's all this about your babysitting Paxton today, James? What do you want? I'm busy. Babysitting? You're only two years older than me. Oh, this won't take long, Diesel. We hear you've been up to some nasty doings lately. Is that so? Well, you're gonna have to be specific, James. I've done lots of dirty deeds in my life, or have you not met me? Don't get cute with me, Buzzbox. You better spill the beans, or I've got a truck full of sugar with your name on it. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> don't have the chuff. Just try me. The way he says, Diesel, I think he means that. Diesel was taken aback. James's sudden ruthlessness made his oil bubble in fright. All right, you broke me, I confess. Huh? You didn't really have a sugar truck, do you? <laughs> Works every time. I bumped Charlie yesterday, and I also <laughs> tricked Philip into thinking that Cranky was an alien, and tried shunting Thomas onto a ship going to Australia. And then I shunted Stafford into the back of Gordon's Express, and then I pushed some trucks into a water tower, uh -huh. and then I told Percy that it was daylight saving so he would be late for work, and then... Uh, actually, we wanted to know if you stole Spencer's coaches last night. Oh, no, I didn't do that. Believe me, I wanted to, but I didn't get the chance. I got called away to make a delivery from the shunting yards to Ulstead. Ever since Rosie and oh, Philip got their fancy new piloting jobs, we're overworked and understaffed at the shunting yards. Oh, God. Oh, great. Another dead end. Wait, Philip's the pilot at So where was he the other? Before Paxton could finish his thought, two familiar whistles tore into the yard. It was Gordon and Rebecca, thundering by with their express trains. Express coming through! Oh, uh, and Rebecca too! <laughs> Hello, James, Paxton, Diesel. The two big engines raced around the bend and disappeared into the distance. Wait, Gordon and Rebecca were at the station last night too. We gotta catch them! Well, I'm not fast enough to catch up with them. Maybe you aren't, but I am. You try and find a shortcut. I'll see if I can catch them at one of the next stations. Wait, you better not tell Sir Topham Hat about that other stuff I told you. Hmm. As fast as he could, James rocketed up the line to try and catch Gordon and Rebecca. Along the way, he kept thinking about what he'd asked the two when they met. The two express engines were a long way ahead. James was chuffing with every ounce of steam he had left. At last, he could see Gordon and Rebecca up ahead. They had stopped at Edward Station to let off passengers. But there was trouble ahead as well. A line of tar tankers were left behind on James's track. By the time James saw the tankers, he was going much too fast. Oh no, James, look out! Yeah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh no, not again! Oh, oh dear. Rat row. Uh, uh, are you okay, 
James? No! Ooh, I made it. Good thing I found that shortcut by the... Uh, James, you've got a little something on your... I noticed. Thank you, Paxton. After clearing the line, Paxton helped James to the washdown to clean the sticky tar off. But for once, having his red paint sparkling again didn't make James happy. Well, I asked Gordon and Rebecca about the coaches, and they're off the hook, too. Gordon went home to have his firebox cleaned, and Rebecca had to take one last train to the docks that night. So, what do we do now? I'll tell you what I'm doing, Paxton. I'm giving up. Giving up? What? But, 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 what about the coaches? What about Thomas? Oh, and Spencer, too. Paxton... There comes a time where you need to admit when you have no idea what you're doing. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm out of suspects. And I just spent the whole day looking like a fool. I'm turning in my badge, throwing in the towel, taking myself off the case. But we don't have badges or towels. What does that mean? I don't know. I can't even tell a good analogy. I'm a failure, a washout, a has-been. Before Paxton could snap James out of it, Philip came along. Hello, James. Paxton? Oh, hello, Philip. Ah, uh, is James all right? He's having a bit of a day. Then Paxton suddenly remembered. Say, Philip, you're the pilot at Nathbud, right? Where were you last night? At the works. A few bolts on my roof came loose. So I asked Sydney to cover for me as station pilot. Really? Sydney didn't mention that. I've said it once. I've said it again. Sydney probably just forgot what job he was doing and... James suddenly thought back on what Paxton said earlier. Sydney would never try to steal coaches. But what if he forgot what he was doing while he was with the coaches? <laughs> Mm -hmm. We've got, got to, to find, find Sydney. Sydney! Did I miss something? Yeah. Luckily, they didn't have to look far. Paxson and James made their way back to the shunting yards. And there was Sydney at the fuel storage tanks. He had spent all day trying to remember what he forgot and needed to be refueled. There he is. So, what's your plan, James? I've got nothing, Paxton. But why don't you take the lead on this one? You know Sydney better than anyone. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you, James. Leave it to me, James. We'll wrap this case up. And so Detective Paxton and James rolled up this their Paxton. last suspect with no plan, but plenty of determination. Oh, hello, James and Paxton. What's going on? Hello, Sydney. We came to help. Help? Help with what? Earlier, weren't you trying to remember something you forgot? That's right, I was. I forgot something important from my job last night. And if I can't remember what, I might be in big trouble. Oh, if I could only remember what my job was last night. Philip told us you were doing pilot duties at Nafford. I was? Oh, oh yes. Yes, I was. And during your job, you shunted Spencer's coaches, didn't you? <gasps> Yes, yes I did. I think I remember now. Um, let me think. What happened that night? Hmm. Oh yeah, Thomas said to let someone else shunt Spencer's coaches, so I did. I took them back to the shunting yards, but then Stanley said, Sorry, Sydney, I can't stop now. Could you shunt those fans onto Henry Spy and Kipper, please? Oh, sure. I'm not doing anything. I forgot I was already doing something, so I shunted the vans onto the kipper, but I couldn't remember what I was doing before. I went off to try and figure that out, but I... but I... but I couldn't. <gasps> Uh-oh. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. You shunted the coaches. Where? The flying kipper? Indeed, Sydney had accidentally shunted Spencer's coaches onto the Flying Kipper. They were safe and undamaged, but now sat in Vickerstown Yard with a very fishy smell. The other engines couldn't help laughing, except for Sydney, who felt very ashamed. I'm sorry about all this. I forgot what I was doing. Huh. 
I understand, Sydney. However, you still cause a lot of confusion. So I want you to work in the shunting yards for a few days to see if we can fix your memory problems. And I believe we owe Thomas an apology for accusing him of stealing, don't we, Spencer? Y yes, I'm truly sorry, Thomas. And I want to thank Paxton and James for clearing my name. You two were amazing! It was elementary, my dear Thomas. A case that could only be solved by Sodor's greatest detective and his even greater partner in crime solving. Aww, wait, which one am I? Hmm. Huh. And before long, things were back to normal on Sodor. Thomas was allowed back on his branch line, and Spencer returned to the mainland with his special coaches. Sadly, the fishy Pong followed him home. As for Sydney, well, he helped out around the shunting yards for a few days, and it did help with his memory for a while. Things became safe on Sodor once again, but who knows how long until the next big mystery arises. But when that day comes, citizens don't need to fear because two of Sodor's finest detectives, James and Paxton, are on the case. I think that's the mob song in piano. Well, um, that was actually really good. Uh, the voice acting and the music was good. There were a few audio issues. I like the sound effects. So yeah, Mr. Mindblocks, a.k.a. Daylight Twinkle, if you're watching this, nice job. And to everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to subscribe to Mr. Mindblocks, Daylight Twinkle. Have a good day, guys.